All right. So another part of the homework was to learn something about uh, Michelangelo's project in Rome or the architect Calatrava. So axis symmetries. So in both the Campidoglio and Calatrava's work, almost um, all of Calatrava's work, we can draw a line down a center point and imagine that the entire plan could be flipped over an axis, okay? So for example, why do we need a formal ordering system? So in Rome, as you can imagine, these cobbled together um, erratic and uh, angular streets that were kind of uh, growing um, organically, right, throughout ancient times. Michelangelo, Michelangelo was hired to find an order within this plaza space. So we're looking at the Campidoglio here. He had a building on the left and right. They have some common elements within them. They have porticos, solid building, and another open air hall. So we kind of see these three bars that if we drew an imaginary line over the center of the piazza, it would flip on the other side. There's a statue in the middle of the piazza that we'll see using Google Earth. And also this back facade, northern facade, that had a central um, element that was projected. So as an architect, let's say you're brought into a city and there's all of this um, different architecture, but you want to find a place in the middle, right? The idea of being an architect is creating a better experience or a higher level experience, our cohesiveness to an area. So Michelangelo's project or problem was unite these areas. So he really accentuated the stairway axis, right, by locating the center of the piazza in line with that axis. It's also the place where the statue was. And then created this really de nice decorative form to have a, a, a place in this piazza. And not until we look at the photographs of that place do we understand that it's simply just an exercise of a design within hard scape, right? Or hard stone or block. It's called not landscape, but hard scape. So we have two different types of marble or the old um, Roman stones that make up this piazza. So here we are looking at the northern facade statue in the middle, and then we're within that building um, in the right picture looking back down the street. So when we start to learn about different architecture in the next few years, it always kind of helps me to understand where that is in the world so that when I go visit that place, maybe I can include Rome into my uh, list of or, you know, places to stop during travel. So these images are from Google Earth, and in one, we see the um, Colosseum in the background, right? So just south of the Colosseum, we have Michelangelo's piazza and the stair that um, comes from that piazza down to the street. You can also look at it in a different way and start to understand um, Michelangelo's abilities when you look at how crooked and, again, how uh, organic these streets were created in Rome, right? So it pulls off of an axis and leads us into this nice central space. So we were in Rome. Okay. So over the Atlantic, here we have Europe, just so that we know where it is that I'm talking uh, about specific architecture, right? Italy is this boot. So if we're in Rome and Italy, we're going to fly two hours west to Spain, and on the coast of Spain, we go to Valencia. So we're going to look at some work by Calatrava. All right, Calatrava, Spanish architect, structural engineer. Again, it makes a lot of sense. He's no longer working with this very organized, hierarchical, Roman formal ordering system, right? But in with today's material, uh, Structural steel, um, tension wire, right? We're looking at work that is a nice blend of um, kind of art, architecture, 
creating a moment in a space and structural engineering feet, right? So he's also a sculptor and a painter. Yes. Yeah. His work is pretty iconic. So you start to go to New York, um, Spain, of course, right? Uh, he has a lot of work at an Olympic village and you start to pick up on architecture that must be Calatrava. It's some sort of engineering feat, typically white. Um, actually, some of them are also mobile. Um, in Milwaukee, there is a museum that actually opens. Yeah. So not all of them are uh, stationary. Yeah, and big architecture, right? Uh, railway stations, stadiums, museums. A lot of them resembling organic forms. Okay, so with the power of Google Earth, we're going to explore a project uh, that he has worked on for over 20 years in Valencia, Spain. So we're going to go to Google or your internet browser and type in Google Earth. And once you're on Google Earth, you're going to search. There's a bar on the left that has a search bar near the top. And we're going to type in Arts and Sciences, Valencia, Spain. Then when you hit enter, Google Earth is going to fly around on the Arts and Sciences Mall. So you should see a, a few buildings that might look like Calatravas, um, all centered around this reflecting pool. In order to get Google Earth to stop spinning, you can click um, a 2D or the 3D button in the bottom right corner near the Earth. should give you a roof plan. Yes. So if we zoom out a little, right, we can start to see where is Italy? Oh, yes, way over there. Okay. And zoom back in. All right. We're going to make sure I want to use Google Earth, not just to look at the pretty pictures and imagine myself being there, but to use the measuring tool and use this as a resource so that I can um, have to put into Revit and SketchUp. So we're going to make sure that your uh, computer knows that we're in feet and inches. So back up to the bar on the left, there are three bars. Once I click that, there is an option for settings. I'm going to go into settings. Everybody find it. Scroll down until you see format and units. Yours could say meters and kilometers. I'm going to change it to feet and miles. And hit save. Then in that same column on the left, at the bottom, there's a ruler. I'll measure and distance when we hover over it. I'm going to click on that. And then just check a box pops up to our right. Make sure that it's in uh, feet. Some of it might be some of you have might have meters there. So make sure that's feet. And then I'm simply just going to measure the distance. So if I'm in, I've clicked the measuring distance area, there's an elevated walkway on Calatrava's building. We're going to click on the left side and drag our cursor right and see if we are all getting the same. Okay, yeah, 686, 682, 676, somewhere around there is good. Okay. And I'm recording this so we can use it. 
tell me what is the depth of it also. It does help to be in that kind of perfect 2D world so that we get an accurate dimension. So we are actually going to build this in Revit today. And we're building a really complicated structure because I can build one section of it and repeat it. Okay, so we're using the ability of the computer. All right. So that is our task. Um, but let's learn a little bit more about the whole complex before we start to understand the structure of the Science Center. So what's the complex? Um, it, it, it was built, as I said, about uh, started about 20 years ago. And the idea was that um, Valencia was trying to pull together um, a place for tourism, right? Boost its economy, draw more people, not only from uh, the country, but also um, Europe in general. So they thought, okay, well, let's make a science and arts park. So the first building, the hemisphere, right? It's shaped like an eye, which you may see on Google Earth. It has an IMAX theater, a planetarium, and like the art, art uh, sculptural artist he is, you know, what's the idea of this building as uh, looking like an eye, right? So for him, the metaphor was the eye of knowledge. It's the centerpiece of the entire complex. And so he uh, theoretically thinks that, uh, you know, what do we look at in a cinema and a planetarium? I have knowledge. Um, the structure itself is literally um, taking that same shape. The building that we're going to focus on, um, the Museum of Science, is a large structure, right? 680 feet long. Um, that has uh, interactive work or uh, displays inside. Parallel to that, kind of outside of the reflecting pond, you can zoom in to your own Google Earth while I'm here. There's an open structure and a landscaped walk, again, with a simple ribbed, repeated geometry to create a very formal and uh, beautiful space. And then lastly, um, there's also an opera house on the site. So you could imagine that you can come to this place for probably 10 or 15 different reasons. Um, when I was traveling abroad, we went to the site in 2002 and the eye was just being built. So there was no water in the pool, um, but I haven't been back since. So uh, it's on my list again. So it's been a, a wonderful boom for the economy in Valencia ever since um, it started. Okay, so we've gone through all this effort of learning how to sketch. And as I've said, I'm using sketch as research. So before I even become overwhelmed with how am I ever going to get this thing in SketchUp, why don't we use our tools of sketching to understand the structure? All right. So I made note of the length and the width of our structure when we were in Google Earth. So I'll give that to you. But what we didn't take a look at was the height of the structure. So this is really kind of hard to see in Google Earth. Um, in the bottom right corner of my screen, um, you'll start to see kind of along that bar uh, that there's a length. Mine says 70 feet, a camera. Um, it gives you um, coordinates. And then it gives you far right a dimension. As I move my cursor, right? So move your cursor on the piazza or the plaza, move it on the elevated walkway, move it onto the roof, right? So can you guys tell me how tall the roof is? Go with 175. My word for it, right? All right. So I get a negative three or a negative two on the plaza and 175 as I hover over um, one of the edges, which people in the last class were getting 175 also. Okay. So let's create a platform in SketchUp. 
of that whole size, and then we're going to start working on just a front elevation. So in SketchUp, remember that it's really handy to use two sets of toolbars. If you're missing your toolbars, right click at the top uh, ribbon, empty ribbon. Make sure you turn on the large tool set and the views. So that's going to give you um, the icons that look like a house so that we can go to plan and elevation. All right, we are going to draw a really large rectangle. Okay, I'm going to draw it again with you, but we're looking to draw a rectangle that's around 680 feet long, 290 feet uh, wide. We can do this one of two ways. I can hit R for rectangle, draw a rectangle, dimension the rectangle, and move lines. I would touch one line M for move, and then move that line until I see 290. Or we can use measuring tools with line and draw it accurately the first time. The only thing I ask is that make sure you're drawing this rectangle on the perfect axis. So we can start with L line. Drag our cursor along the red axis. And then type in 685 feet. Enter. And remember that. Let's see. Well, how do we indicate feet and inches, right? The foot would be just the apostrophe. So if I say something is one foot apostrophe, for the quote, that's inches. Okay, so back to SketchUp. We've drawn 685. I'm gonna type L for line tool again. Use that snap point and make sure that I'm drawing on the green axis. If we draw this rectangle not on the axis, it's gonna be a nightmare to draw this building. So we're going to pull the pencil line on the green axis. I'm going to type 290 feet, enter. And then I can close off the square just by drawing lines. SketchUp will give me, um, if I draw an axis, I can finish the rectilinear platform. So why don't you do this? And use the dimension tool. I hit dimension, click both endpoints, and then drag the dimension up. In SketchUp, I think it's easier if I can draw on surfaces, right? So if I create a surface, we did this with the two point arc and the dome, right? I can draw on a surface, and it just seems that all of my lines will be in the same plane that way. Right, as compared to just drawing arcs without any reference points. Sometimes they just do funky things. They go on the wrong axis, right? So the way I lead the exercise drawing this elevation is kind of a combination of drawing guidelines, drawing triangles, and then the angle, just because I don't want our angles to be moving off into Space at random. We're going to draw the elevation of that first arch. We looked at uh, the height, right? Put Google Earth off on the side. So I'm going to look at. Um, my image that I snipped off Google Earth. Okay. 
And I am not going to draw everything here to the exact but because I know that the building is highest at the peak of that roof, and that's in line kind of with where the arch hits on the ground, that's a really important moment in that elevation. So along the right edge of your platform, I want you to pick a point that's two thirds from the bottom edge, and I want you to create a line that's 175 feet tall, right? What happens when I draw that line on any edge in SketchUp is that it breaks the edge lines into two parts. So I can highlight uh, the line on the left or the right. The line on the left, I want you to find the snap midpoint. And draw a vertical. I'm going to draw mine at 50 feet. I'm just trying to gauge like how high is that bottom arch compared compare to the hole. Um, just 50. Yep. But I'm going to click two point arc and start with the bottom archway. I'm going to click an endpoint, endpoint, then my 50 foot line. Then I'm going to draw the two point arc that connects Let's make the second arc a little easier. I'm going to draw a triangle first. So as we explore Calatrava's um, tubular roof, we see that, that there's a distance between the top of the gable and kind of the bottom of that square tube. Again, just judging by proportion, select where that might be on your elevation. Right, so I chose a point about 30 feet from the top, and I'm just doing that by eye, right? If this line's 50 feet, this one is less. And I'm going to connect that line to the front end point. So I have this triangular facade. Now, because I have that hypo uh, hypotenuse of the triangle there, I'm going to try my two point arc tool again. Bear with me, we'll go back and do this again. So, bottom right corner, top right, and now it can snap to a pink. Reference point and it creates a. A surface. I can go back in and touch those lines and delete or use the erase tool. I'm going to do one more triangle because we're all kind of drafting at different speeds. I'm just going to connect top of that arc to the back right edge and create um, a half arc that connects that point to that straight line. So again, I'm using the two point arch. I want to make sure that SketchUp knows I want to draw this on the face. For me, it's a cyan color. And I can get rid of that line. We are going to offset this arch line, arcing line, right? Because not only is it the bottom rib, but we notice it is the top angle um, or it's aligned in the same arch offset as the 
a tube steel belong. So I'm going to select that arched line. And I'm going to use offset button. And when I click that offset button, I still have this vertical line that I can use as a reference. So I'm going to click the intersection of that angled line and then click the top of my 75, 175 foot line. Did I redo that? Oh, great. Okay. Now I have these two lines. I'd like that to have a face. So I'm going to look at sketch at um, the building to try and decide the angle. If I call this the tube structure, does that make sense to everyone? I'm kind of calling this the tube. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to take a look at the angle here and on the opposite side. I'll use the still for reference. So spacebar, spacebar, L for line or pencil. Again, I'm going to go to the intersection of my arc and vertical line. Try and draw a uh, angular line to match the picture. Same thing for the other side. So L for line, and I'm not measuring here, just looking. And it creates a solid form. Sometimes in SketchUp, let's say, you know, you have a missing center piece. You just use the line tool and outline some existing lines. Sometimes the surface comes back or maybe you select a center point, connect, and then you can erase that line. I don't know why outlining works, but it does. Back to Google Earth. How far away are these arching rib structures? So let's use the measuring tool. Tell me a distance between the ribs. 30 feet. I'm going to give myself a reference again, because if I can duplicate the object, I can use some of those lines to create surfaces, right? I just connect the dots and then I can use that to create surface. So let's look at Drawing a 30 foot line, so L tool, hover on the bottom right of my platform, click once, drag left, type 30 feet, enter, then I can highlight that small 30 foot section and just draw a line vertical line up from there just so I have a reference. Selecting objects uh, in different programs is done in different ways. So what I want to do, whoops, I deleted something on here. What I want to do is grab just this uh, vertical surface that I've been drawing and copy it over to that 30 foot mark. So the easiest way to do that is if I go to plan view, zoom in near that edge, I can either hold um, to make selections, I can click and hold my mouse down and drag my cursor right or left. If I drag it to the right, 
I only grab what's contained in the square. But if I click and drag, holding down the button, drag left, I grab everything that line touches. So there's a couple ways of just grabbing this elevation. I can left drag, click, hold. You can also hold down control and pick all the parts, but and that takes forever in my opinion. If you grab too many parts, you can hold shift and delete some of the selections that way also. But let's grab just that vertical together. We're gonna hit control C to copy it. Control V as in Victor to paste. And let's just put it anywhere in space, right next to it. I'm gonna use an endpoint and align it to the 30 foot mark in a second. So my cursor is already in the move command. I'm going to select the bottom of the arc and then hover it where I created that vertical line that represents 30 feet. Okay, so I just did that control V, placed it, grabbed the endpoint, and it automatically was in the move command. And then why don't we hit control F to save before we lose our work? So I'm showing you where we go next, and then we're gonna do it together. So on Calatrava's science building, there is a small angle coming off of the large bottom arc that holds this elevated platform. So we're going to draw that angle, right? And I need it because the top of the tube angle connects to it. So that's this. Now we're gonna draw the roof. Oops. On top of uh, that arc, sorry. Draw the roof. Okay, so we have two of these objects. And I want to create the front face of that tubular square. So I am going to look for the intersection, right, where that tube intersects the big arc and connect the dots of the top and bottom. So it should really only give you a face here. Work on this angle and connecting the top arcing angle to it. So watch me or do it on your own. Again, I'm going to use um, two point arc tool. So I'm gonna click that two point arc tool, touch the edge of the first arc I drew into a view that I can tell the angle. Then I zoomed around so that I could find the green axis and find that archway. Mine doesn't look exactly like it, but that's okay. Let's say uh, you don't have the line, right? Um, you can use a straight line. So go to the side elevation view and just draw with an L line at an angle. I know it doesn't take the arc, but that's all right. So if you draw that line, then you can use it to connect.
Let's see if that works. I'm trying to achieve is this piece, this triangular piece, right? So it isn't on any axis. It's um, triangular in form, right? So gee, how do I even break this thing down? So what I did is I just drew a few things in the vertical direct dimension, copied them in three places, and then connected some dots. All right. So you, your fins, when we draw this, are going to look different, but we're just using it so that I can understand how to connect um, the triangular portion. I'm going to go to my side view again. Look in Google Earth because I know that that um, the lift uh, plane. I, I know that has an angle. So I want to draw an angle that's somewhat similar to that. But I'm going to start with a uh, square surface to do that. Let's try rectangle tool to start. So again, I'm on the front or yeah, right side view. I'm going to draw a rectangle. It doesn't look like it's quite on that angled edge, right? And I'm able to create that rectangle. Wherever that corner touches, no matter what your rectangle looks like, you're going to draw a line from that corner edge and strain it on the right. And you're going to draw it across to connect the two pieces, just like we did to connect our square initially. The top of uh, the tube might become a surface and it might not. All right, one more command and we're saving for today and we're done. I'm going to double click on that rectangle form. Yours could look totally different. I'm going to control C, control V, place it anywhere in space, grab the endpoint, and I'm going to copy it on the midpoint and I'm going to control V. Move another one to the far edge because then I can just use L line all that just to build this little triangle. All right, I'm just using those lines, but they're at weird angles coming off of this arc. And I'm going to pause there. Now I've moved back to the other construction just to show you that we can draw these triangles in uh, many different ways using those three rectangles. It's up to you. You gauge the angle of the roof over the tube and then draw the rectangle and we can get rid. Sorry, draw the triangle, then get rid of the rectangles. So I have a path along which I can follow me to draw that roof and use um, the arch angle and this triangle to do so. So I'm going to choose the following me tool, select the triangle, and then select the path that I want it to follow. Next comes the tricky part. We'll go back to Google Earth. And notice the alignment. Yes, we've used that tube structure in order to draw the roof, but it's offset to the right. So we're going to make a group of the roof and position it over the right edge of the tube and then angle out the arc solid um, surface.
I'm going to position my cursor so that I can use the left drag tool. Click left, drag right to grab the entire roof. If you don't grab the whole thing, hold down control until you select everything you want. If you want to remove something from the selection, hit shift. and select the components you do not want. To make a group, I'm going to right click, make group. Now I can move this element. Let's go to the handy roof plan view. Hit M for move, constrain on the right axis and move it to be centered on the right hand edge. The easiest way to make a group, I'm sorry, the angle between the triangular roof and the bottom of the arc is to also make this surface a group. So I'm going to hold down control and select the components of this arc, right click and make a group. Glide. What I'm going to do next is move that arced surface at an angle. I'm going to make it a group first. I'm going to move that surface to the outer edge of the gabled roof. I'm going to draw a line connecting the bottom of that arcing surface back to the main structure and then go within that group and move the lower arc line back to the structure. So let's do that together. I'm going to select, holding down control, all the components of that arc, right click, make a group, M for move, I'm going to use endpoints so that I can use the snap. Move that surface to the outer edge of the gable roof. Double click to get within. I hit spacebar, double click. I'm, again, I'm gonna position SketchUp because that line is in many arcs. If you accidentally click out of it, just double click back into the group. I'm going to position it in a way so that I can drag my mouse across to select that whole base group. Otherwise, I have to select this item in elements. So before selecting that line, let's draw a line between the surface and the back structure. Now select the entire line. Hit M for move, hold a constraint, and then use our arrow keys because this is going to want to move everywhere. To constrain this, use the right arrow key to constrain it on the red and bring it back to the main structure. And then you can click out of it and hit save control S. The next part of the section is fun. We're going to use offset to create the tube steel skeleton structure. We're going to erase the second copy of our elevation so that once we push and pull that structure, we're able to copy that entire element over. And then we're also going to work on this Y-frame iconic structure of Calatrava. So let's go back to our example. Again, be careful. Erasing, I'm going to select items. I can keep my 30 foot guide points because I'll need those to copy this main structure later. But I can remove most of that elevation. I'll leave my square guideline there for now. I'll leave some more of these lines just in case I need them.
Okay, so if we compare this again to Google Earth or a still image, we can define where we begin to offset those structural elements. I'm actually going to treat this entire surface as one. So I can erase my guiding 175 foot line. I'm going to select the offset tool, select the surface, and then drag my cursor up and down until I see a proportion that matches the image. I'm going to delete the line over the arc, delete my 50 foot guideline, offset this surface, offset this surface again using the offset tool, hover, select, one more, let's create an offset surface for this arc. I'm just selecting the surface once. Well, if you're having trouble, always escape and spacebar helps. I can hit offset first, the surface, not the edge. Well, actually in this case, the edge is fine. Surface or edge and pull that in to match. Now let's clean up these lines so that they create complete surfaces um, so that we can delete the interior. I'm going to delete this bottom line, hit L for line. Notice that I can then delete this interior surface. I'm going to delete this baseline, extend the structure here. I have to create an enclosed form. Extend and delete. Delete that surface. This line extending down from the center of the roof is going to be helpful in drawing the Y type structure. So let's draw the skeleton of the structure and then we'll push pull everything to have a depth. So I'm going to um, go to the front face view so that I am in alignment. And I'm going to draw a point, I'll swivel around so that you can see, using line, connect the roof, edges, to that center point. And it's okay if it's not creating a surface. Let's use the offset command again. Create a small Y. Mine is not perfectly symmetrical, is it? Sometimes, again, just outlining the same line will provide a surface. From that surface, I'm going to outline it similar to the last one. And then just to align this so that the angles of my Y are consistent, I'm going to just use this line and copy it two more times to create a thickness. So control C to copy, control V to paste anywhere on our screen. I'm in a move command. I touch the top. Control V again. Use that endpoint again to select it on the surface and then connect the dots to create a surface. Why don't we clean up this Y so that you don't see any of these um, interior surfaces or lines. So I'm going to delete a few lines. 
Um, try not to delete any line. That would get rid of uh, any other surfaces that you've worked on. This one's okay to be removed. Oops. I'm going to extend these. Um, if I take from the endpoint, you'll see that SketchUp guides you. So as much of a solid Y-shaped structure as we can. You know what? Does it have the center? I don't think it does. So let's remove that as well. Well, a little bit. Okay, we can leave it. All right. Now comes the fun. Let's delete the surface of the square for now. Because when I start to push-pull objects, sometimes other lines will interfere with that command. So let's start on the big overarching volume. I'm going to say P for push-pull or use the button. When I start to push-pull this surface, notice the distance at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to make that one foot enter. And then... If I am push-pulling on the same surface, I can use that as a guide instead of typing one foot every time. When I hover over the next surface, if my cursor moves to the already push-pulled one foot, I can align it there. So we're just push-pulling one foot for these elements, and we're going to push-pull our Y-shaped structure out as well. Compared to the model, well, as compared to the building, the model Y looks a little long for me. Yours can look slightly different, but I'm going to push pull the end to bring it back up. Sometimes if push pull doesn't work, I draw additional lines and remove surfaces. I'd like to draw the elevated walkway as well, or at least a guide for it. And we're going to notice that the arc comes off of the main structure, the Y intersects it. That arc extends a little bit farther and then the platform. Let's go to our right side view again. And where that arc intersects the Y. It's not exact, of course. We're going to draw a 12 foot. Sorry, 24 foot. Extended walkway. Create a surface. And I know I said you could delete the surface of that square, but I want it back. So let's just outline using line the edge of that square. Okay. So I'm going to begin uh, to perfect some of these things that push pulled in the wrong direction that made a hollow. I can do that just by using the line tool and tracing some of the elements along the bottom where push pull decided to make this element hollow. If it begins to take too long, as I see my lower arc is, I can simply just copy the surface, paste it here, I'm running the move command, and I can use that edge point to select that back. The combination of white and blue surfaces are fine for today. Okay. Before I copy my structure a few times, I'm going to separate 
the platform from the structure. If I don't get it right the first time, I can use the M tool constrain. Whoops. All right, just drawing a line to separate that surface and deleting a few of the edges. Okay. So I've got a structure now, Beauty of Calatrava. I'm going to copy this at 30 foot increments. I just want to select the structured element and feel free. If you're interested in drawing some of these louvers, if um, you want to add more detail to the overhang roof, that's great. But for the purposes of our beginner SketchUp tools, you've done a great job if it looks like uh, this at all to this point. Selecting the whole thing, hitting Control C, typing in Control V, I have an endpoint that I can use at the base of the arch and my 30 foot guideline. I'm going to do one more. Paste it. And I start to see the entire structure take shape, right? So how many ribs do we have until we're done copying? Well, we already measured the base. Instead of copying uh, one at a time, once I have a few on the ground, I can copy those. Control C, Control V. I did mean to um, not select this in the last few. I just want one of those so that I can extend it once at the end. So I'm just triple clicking it so that I don't have uh, multiple. All right, select the entire element. Hit M for move. Whoop, forgot my guide point. I can draw a 30 foot line with L 30 feet. Copy that. Move. I'm hitting Control V again. I copied the one with the line. Move. I have quite a few here. Why don't I? Copy them again. Remove the small walkway. Hitting, um, oh, deleted my line. Draw another reference line, 30 feet. And I don't know how easy it is to um, grab them as a whole, right? Once they're together, how many more do we think would fit? Let's measure. Okay. Hopefully I don't grab too much of something else. Again, I'm always careful not to paste the object into the previous construction. I zoom around to find my endpoints, right? Because if I do this on accident and then I want to move something, of course, because everything in that object was not a group, it almost glues on to each other. So I just want to be careful when I paste. All right, this looks like a great finished project. We can take it a few steps further, not required, but we have a an arcing glass. It actually has a spine that almost opens in the middle of each of these bays along the back. So we didn't draw anything there before we repeated. We're going to draw one shape at the base and then use that again to follow me up and over the lower arc. 
I'm going to use a simple half shape form and actually draw it on the ground plane. So I'm going to go to roof plane in the views, zoom into the far right, use the two point arc tool, make sure it's constrained on green, and then follow me tool to bring this up the entire arc. And we'll see how far it wants to go into the structure, right? <laughs> okay, mine goes up a little bit. We can always use the push pull tool to bring it back down to the ground. Best way to repeat that again, we'll do the same exercise. I'm going to grab the element, paste it off to the side and clean it up over here. Oops, control Z always undoes your moves. Okay, I'm going to triple click this element, make it a group, and move it with a an end point. Okay, and then I can copy that multiple times. Before you make your final snip, let's add text. Let's do 3D text. Let's type in Calatrava's name. Science Museum, Valencia, Spain. When I place this on the ground, it's severely undersized for the size of our structure, so we are going to scale it. I'm going to touch the scale button And if I grab a corner edge, it will allow the entire text to scale in proportion. So we can put that across the front. And then my walkway and I am done. I'm going to push pull the walkway the entire length. Delete this last square. And you may take a still image to turn in. If you'd like to do anything farther, some of the structure on the sides, I suggest going into the roof plan view, drawing the angle of that structure on the ground, see how it sort of arcs out. You can explore that in Google Earth 2D. In the top plan here, roof plan, I would again use the two point arc and draw a skeleton of the structure prior. Make sure I grab the ground plane. Skeleton of the structure before I draw the tubes, right? So looking at the image, I'm drawing lines between the bottom plane. Again, I can always Offset these. If something fills in, you can always erase them or use that surface. Right, and then one up to the crux here. So use that as a guide before you start to add any of that angled structure. All right, nice job.